One night, Henry and Gordon were alone with James. Although Sir Topham Hatt was beginning to think well of him, whenever a chance came, the other engines would talk of nothing but bootlaces. Remember when they had to use a bootlace to get you out of trouble, James? They would tease. James tried to get back by talking about Henry, who got shut up in a tunnel, and Gordon, who got stuck on a hill. But they wouldn't listen. You talk too much, little James, said Gordon. A fine, strong engine like me has something to talk about. I'm the only engine who can pull the express. When I'm not there, they need two engines. Think of that. I've pulled expresses for years and have never once lost my way. I seem to know the right line by instinct. Every wise engine knows that the signalman sets the switches to make the engines run on the right tracks. But Gordon was so proud, he had forgotten. Wake up, James, said Gordon next morning. It's time for the express. What are you doing? Odd jobs? Ah, oh, well, we all have to begin somewhere, don't we? Run along and get my coaches. Don't be late. James went to get Gordon's coaches. They were all shining with new paint. He was careful not to bump them, and they followed him smoothly into the station, singing happily. We're going away! We're going away! I wish I were going with you, said James. I should love to pull the express and go flying along the line. Gordon, with much noise and blowing of steam, got ready to back onto the train. Sir Topham Hatt was on the train with other important people, and as soon as they heard the conductor's whistle, Gordon started. Look at me now, look at me now, he puffed, and the coaches glided after him. <laughs> Goodbye, little James. See you tomorrow. James watched the train disappear and then went back to work. He pushed some freight cars into their proper sidings and went to fetch the coaches for another train. James had just brought the coaches to the platform when he heard a mournful noise. There was Gordon trying to sneak into the station without being noticed. Hello, Gordon. Is it tomorrow? Gordon didn't answer. He just let off steam feebly. Did you lose your way, Gordon? No, it was lost for me. I was switched off the main line onto the loop. I had to go all round and back again. Perhaps it was instinct, said James. All the passengers were shouting at the ticket window. We want our money back. Sir Topham Hatt climbed onto a cart and blew the conductor's whistle so loudly that they all stopped to look at him. Then he promised them a new train at once. Gordon can't do it. Will you pull it for us, James? Yes, sir. I'll try. So James was coupled on and everyone got in. Do your best, James, said Sir Topham Hatt. Come along, come along, puffed James. You're pulling us well, you're pulling us well, sang the coaches. Hurry, 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 puffed James. Bridges and stations flashed by. The passengers cheered, and they soon reached the station. Everyone said thank you to James, and Sir Topham Hatt was very impressed. Well done. Would you like to pull the express sometimes? Yes, please, answered James. Next day, when James came by, Gordon was pushing freight cars. I like some quiet work for a change, he said. I'm teaching these cars manners. You did well with those coaches, I hear. Good, we'll show them. And he gave his cars a bump. James and Gordon are now good friends. James sometimes takes the express to give Gordon a rest. Gordon never talks about bootlaces, and they're both quite agreed on the subject of freight cars.